ready? Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first and foremost, uh, on behalf of the department, uh, I want to extend the deepest condolences uh, to the victims of this horrific event that took place in Orlando, their families, the community, as well as the Orlando Police Department. They were faced with a horrific attack that no community should have to endure and they're now suffering through the aftermath of that tragedy with a level of loss that is hard to comprehend. So collectively our hearts go out to that community uh, and they are in our thoughts. Um, but more so today instead of talking about what happened in Orlando I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about Austin, uh, what we do in Austin to prepare for an event that we hope never occurs here but does seem to be occurring more frequently across this country, steps we take to keep our community safe and processes and programs we have in place uh, to address that. Uh, if we think back to lessons learned, when we had the attack occur on the Boston Marathon, uh, Austin being a city that's home to many uh, racing events, marathons, it's got a very uh, healthy running culture, uh, we took lessons learned from that. Obviously, those attackers were able to take advantage of some uh, opportunities uh, and find some uh, opportunity to create that attack. We looked at uh, how we do security here in Austin for all of our races, and although I won't go into the specifics of that, we took steps to make sure that we were target hardening each and every one of our races so that we wouldn't face a similar uh, situation here or that we've taken all steps to address what occurred there. And we do that every time that an incident like this occurs, which again seems to be all too frequent across this community. We took this stance way back in 2008 in the aftermath of the Mumbai terrorist attacks, if you remember where those terrorists uh, did multiple attacks across Mumbai. Uh, the siege lasted for several days. And as we analyzed what occurred there, we realized that if a similar event were to occur here, at that time it would have taxed our ability as an agency to truly respond to that in, in an effective manner and to put down a threat like that uh, as quickly as possible. And if you remember back then, we formed the counter assault strike team uh, in, the, in the time after that event. Uh, that team is still in existence now. Uh, this is a team of approximately 120 officers, Austin police officers that have received advanced training and equipment uh, in the area of active shooter prevention and response. Uh, these officers are primarily officers that serve in our patrol division uh, and they also serve some in our investigative division as well. These officers are on routine patrol, days, evenings, and nights, seven days a week, and would be available as first responders if we were to ever face a horrific incident like this one. And again, this is all about lessons learned, target hardening, and making your community as safe as possible. So we've learned lessons from Mumbai, we've learned lessons from Boston, and we will look to this, this again, this tragedy that occurred in Orlando to look for any lessons that may be learned and to incorporate those into our actions, our plans, and the work that we do here in Austin. We do have many resources in place here in Austin, specifically. Uh, we've talked about the CAST team. Uh, we also have the Austin Regional Intelligence Center, ARIC. I think you all are very familiar with that, but ARIC allows us to share information with all of our regional law enforcement partners um, in the effort to connect the dots to make sure that we're not missing uh, the bigger picture of what might be occurring across the region. Uh, ARIC is always active in monitoring uh, for any threat streams, anything that's occurring locally, uh, nationally, or even internationally that might pose a threat here locally if there's a potential that there could be criminal activity. Uh, in the wake of what happened in Orlando, obviously ARIC was spun up and immediately started paying attention to what happened. Uh, again, looking to see if there was anything that would pose a threat here in Austin. ARIC continues to monitor uh, all of the information they're getting, uh, both open source information, uh, information they're getting from our federal partners uh, regarding what did occur in Orlando uh, to ensure that there's no continuing threat uh, to, to the country or specifically here to Austin. And again, this is what we do on a regular basis, but specifically in light of what happened in Orlando, they're focused on that right now and sharing that information with our regional partners to ensure that we are as secure as possible. We have the regional, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, we have the, uh, the real-time crime center, and this is an operation that's open 24-7. Uh, this is our, uh, for lack of a better term, a watch commander office, where we have a lieutenant 
who is in the real-time crime center monitoring every single call that's going on in Austin at any given time. Uh, they're responsible, uh, especially in the evening and overnight hours, to uh, m manage resources, move resources around. If we have an incident that's challenging one part of the, the city, taking a lot of resources to move those, uh, those resources around. Uh, I bring this up only in light of the, the entertainment district, uh, which I'm sure is of great uh, concern to a lot of folks based on where this incident in Orlando occurred and the fact that Austin's got a very vibrant nightlife, a very uh, vibrant downtown entertainment district and um, the questions that many probably ask, could that happen here? Uh, so again, these are the steps that we take in the area of information gathering, intelligence gathering, and intelligence sharing to make sure that we're connecting the dots and not missing something that may be, uh, that may be out there uh, and that we're aware of, of any potential threat. We do a lot of training with our officers. Every Austin police officer gets training on how to respond to an active shooting situation. Uh, this has been going on for quite a while. Uh, many, many years ago, it was called HIPS training. It was stood for homicide in progress uh, training, and now it's just moved to the current terms that tends to be used, and that's active shooter. And uh, the lessons that we've learned from the Columbine attacks, uh, you know, about the need for an immediate response and engaging um, the, the, uh, the threat that the suspects pose. So we continue to learn. Every officer goes through this training. We've got the CAST team I mentioned earlier. The CAST team also goes out and provides training to the officers uh, in the police department through show-up trainings, teaching them different ways to approach different types of tactical situations. Again, all so that our officers as, are as best prepared for possible should we ever have to be placed in the position that Orlando was placed in early Sunday morning. Uh, and again, we, we've got future events coming up. I think everyone also will probably be uh, asking questions about the Pride Parade. Uh, we have the Pride Parade in August. We celebrate the Pride Parade here every year. Uh, it's a great event where we get members of Austin's uh, LGBTQ community coming out along with just regular Austinites and they come out and they, they have a parade down Congress and it's a huge celebration and it's been uh, held for many, many years and it will be held again this year and we will step up our efforts to make sure that we are again paying attention to any threat that may be out there uh, as we've done in years past so that this parade and the celebration can be held in, in safety as it's been held in, in years past. Um, we also have a group that gives training to local businesses, local churches, uh, again on how to respond to an active shooter. Uh, it's unfortunate that we live in a time where you have to be prepared for how you would respond for yourself and your family or whatever group you are with, whether it be at a restaurant, a movie theater, a church, or now even an entertainment district. Um, we've got a group of officers, again, part of the cast team that goes out to the community, has been doing this for years, teaching businesses, teaching churches, teaching schools, any group that wants a, a training session on how they can best target harden their facility how they would best respond if they were to be faced by an active shooter situation um, and just the best ways to stay informed and prepared. So again, if there are groups in the community that are interested in this type of training for their business or their facility, this is something that the police department can, uh, can support and we have for many years. Uh, we have specifically reached out to some of the local LGBTQ leaders in light of what happened in Orlando early Sunday morning, again, offering this training to them if, if they see fit. But again, this is something we offer uh, throughout the community to any group that's interested. I think what's really important though is, is we hear all too often in, in the aftermath of, of a tragedy like this where people make the comments similar to, this person started acting suspiciously a few days ago, or this person made a comment last week that was somewhat threatening, or I knew this person went out and purchased this weapon and it just seemed out of the ordinary, but they never said anything. And this goes to the heart of the see something, say something campaign. And although people are fearful for being called out for uh, not being politically correct by giving concerns for one group or another. The fact is, if you see something that's of a concern to you, there's nothing wrong with reporting that and you should report that. That's how, as a community, we keep each other safe. Um, and again, I think that we're, uh, as, as this investigation progresses in Orlando, um, I think it's gonna highlight, again, the importance of see something, say something. And that's what we want here for Austin. Uh, the police department is equipped and trained and we can handle 
events but we're stronger and we're better when we've got the partnership with the community. We've got the ears and eyes of the community uh, giving us information so that we are better prepared. So uh, we work with several groups here in the police department that are uh, focused on the LGBTQ community. Uh, we provide outreach with this community. We have reached out to them in the wake of this tragedy since this particular one targeted their community. And again, in closing, I just want to say, as a community, as a department, our heartfelt sorrow lies with the victims and their families and the community of Orlando in the wake of, of the deadliest attack uh, of this type in our country. Um, and with that, I'll uh, open it up for a few questions. Can you talk about how, once somebody sees something, once that tip comes in, people were talking about the case in Orlando, also, you know, you know here was, there was the case just on Friday of somebody at BRAC making a threat to blow up the hospital. Um, can you just talk about how the police department goes ahead and tries to assess whether those are legitimate threats? Sure, well, a lot of that is gonna be specific to the individual incident or the individual threat. We'll look at that person's uh, history. Uh, is this a person who maybe suffers from some type of a, a disorder and has done things like this in the past? Uh, we will look at their uh, history to see if they've been involved in violent actions in the past. Are they associated with any group that may have inklings to do maybe what it is that they threaten to do? So again, we'll track down leads, we'll look at information, and we'll see whether there's any reason to believe that whatever they have threatened uh, is a credible threat, and then we'll respond accordingly. And is Eric wrapped in at that point? Yes, if we were to receive uh, information that someone had made a threat similar to the one you described last week, we would get ARIC in because they're the ones that have the ability to reach out to all of the local partners and what as well, so that we're not only focusing on information we have here in Austin, but information we have regionally as well as nationally. We talk so much about the, the shortage of officers. So if a, a large scale event happens like this, do we have the staff to, to to continue with other police work during that event, or how, how would that work? Sure, so what would happen, and obviously, if, if a community is faced with, with an incident like this, you're going to have every possible resource heading towards that incident. Uh, this is what I talked about in the, in, in the Mumbai incident. They staged attacks in different parts of the city at the same time to stretch their resources. So we have trained for how we would respond to something like that. And then we would also go into a mutual aid with the surrounding agencies. We've got the Travis County Sheriff's Department, the Texas Department of Public Safety, the University of Texas has a police department, Williamson County Sheriff's, uh, Hayes County Sheriff. So we're fortunate that being in the region we're in, we have got a lot of support here in the region. And with many of the departments I just mentioned, we actually do training exercises with them as well. So although it would stretch our resources, we would pull in every resource to handle it. Can you also speak to the fact that yes, this the Orlando Police Department is in Florida, but um, police departments work together, there's a brotherhood. I mean, are there any connections between APD and Orlando Police, that sort of thing? Have y'all reached out to them at all? Yes, I, I, we let them know that, that obviously they're, they're not going to need resources from us, but just from a more of a support that, you know, we, we understand the tragedy that they've been through and the difficulty that they've faced. As a law enforcement community, as in, with many other uh, public safety groups, uh, it, is, it is a tight-knit family, and uh, it is uh, hard to imagine what those first responding officers went through as they tried to respond to that and, and understand the magnitude of the threat that they were facing uh, and then the challenge of, of the response that they had to put together. Are you concerned about copycat crimes at all? Sometimes these big events can influence that. Sure, I think you always have to be aware that when these things get in the media that sometimes you have individuals that do this for the sake of getting the publicity that this obviously has garnered. Uh, but I think we live in a day and a time where people always have to be vigilant. You always have to be aware of your surroundings. Uh, you always have to be aware of what's normal in your community, in your neighborhood, in your workplace, so that you can easily identify what's not normal and then determine whether or not it's something that's of a concern, back to the see something, say something, that you should report it. Do you get an uptick in those type of reports after events like this? It'd be hard to say on a national scale after such a major incident like this whether there's an uptick. Again, I think the focus is that you just have to, as a community, we all have to be aware. We all have a role to play in this. Obviously, as, as the law enforcement uh, providers for this community, we have a very significant role, but each and every member of our community needs to play a role in keeping all of us safe. Last question. 
said you had 